Hey guys, it's Core Ross and welcome to Six News. So for the last four days, I've been playing the new season on Neon Dawn for Rainbow Six Siege, which is the final one of year five, and it comes with a new defender, and her name is Aroni. Now she has these laser gates, but we'll get onto that shortly. First, I think we'll go over her loadout. So for primary, she's got the choice of Mozzie's P10 Ronnie or Dockaby's M14 EBR, which of course is a designated marksman rifle. For secondary, she's got the PRB92 handgun. And for gadgets, she's got the choice between barbed wire or bulletproof camera. Although in the presentation they gave today, it is very possible that they actually said barbed wire and proximity alarm. So there might be a bit of difference there. And that apparently that's because that's one of the easiest things to move around for balancing. So they're probably going to change that during the test ever phase. Now she also has another addition to her loadout and that is her bionic arm or prosthetic, whatever you want to call it. So she's able to do normal melee stuff. So, you know, just punching people with stuff like that. But also she can punch holes in walls. So she effectively doesn't have a shotgun, but she actually has something that's better for making rotation holes. So this thing's pretty damn good and very, very, very useful. Like really goddamn useful. And she's able to use it to one punch open hatches. She can also open barricades in one punch as well. And like I said, she can make rotation holes too. So yeah, very useful gadget. And I think it's, you know, it's obviously very gimmicky, but the thing is it actually is really useful. So although it seems very gimmicky, this is a really cool addition to her kit. Now let's move on to her main gadget, the laser gates. Now, what I can say about these is that they just kept surprising me. Like me and Grief Drums, pretty much as soon as we got access to this, we popped on and we just started doing some basic tests. And pretty much every second, me or him were going, that was a surprise because these things do not work anything like I imagined they would. And they're amazingly complicated for a Rainbow Six Siege gadget because there is a lot of very simple gadgets in Siege that aren't that intensive. Like if you look back at my Mythbuster videos when it comes to just doing specific operators, usually they're not like, you know, they don't really make it to 10 minutes if it's just about one operator because usually there just isn't that much to cover. Well, this operator has got a lot of complexity to our gadget. And you might want to just jump to the conclusion that this is basically a castle barricade, but with lasers. And it's not. So the way this works is, of course, it creates a laser and it attaches to the tops of doors or the tops of walls, which take up the exactly same amount of space as a reinforced wall would. And you can also attach it to hatches. And whether or not you put the gadget on first or afterwards, you can reinforce that wall or a hatch even when the gadget's on it, which is very nice. The laser gate will also switch off when a defender comes close to it so that they can walk through safely. And if attacker walks through it, they will take 40 damage. However, if that attacker actually lingers in the doorway, they will take two ticks of damage. So they'll actually take 80 damage. However, these gates are very easy to counter. So first of all, you can throw anything into it. So any of your gadgets or flashbangs or grenades will go into the laser and be destroyed by the laser gate, but they'll also switch off the gate for a total of 30 seconds. And then they need to be manually activated by shooting at a target that's actually on the gadget. So if these gates are placed outside objectives on the opposite side of doors, the defenders are gonna have a hard time actually switching them back on. So you're gonna to have to be very mindful about placement when you're putting these things down so you can reactivate them very easily. The attackers can also choose to sacrifice a drone as well because jumping that into the lasers will also deactivate them. Now, the big thing is here, of course, that 30 second time. That is a really, really long time for them to be inactive and then for them to be manually switched back on afterwards is a huge pain in the butt. But it does balance it out quite well. It also makes it very hard to use them very, very well. It also should be noted that a friendly gadget can also deactivate the gate. So something like an impact grenade actually going through the lasers will again be destroyed by the lasers and switch the gate off. And this is the same for things like lesion mines as well. So that is quite a pain in the butt. Now you can, as this new operator, go and actually pull down your gadget and reapply it and it'll come back online to make it quicker if you don't wanna wait the 30 seconds. But you are, of course, very vulnerable, especially if you're doing this in a doorway or something like that, that could easily get you killed. Now, at this point in the video, you might be thinking this gadget doesn't sound very good. Like it's got a lot of downsides to it. You know, it does have some positives for sure, but it does have quite a few downsides too. Well, the major upside to this gadget is that 
it's impervious to all damage which means if you try to destroy the actual gadget part and get rid of it completely you cannot it is invulnerable to every single thing even maverick's blowtorch that is capable of burning through reinforced walls this thing doesn't even care about like it is literally indestructible it is made from the same stuff as like captain america's shield or something like that because there's nothing that can destroy it so that is a major bonus and also the other major bonus is that this operator doesn't have to reset her own traps anyone on a defensive team can actually shoot it even the attacker team can shoot it and switch it back on which might happen from time to time just by accident now before we go into more complexity on this gadget because there is let's talk about our actual role so i think she's a little bit intel this is because people have to deactivate the actual gate to get through so if you know that that gate just went offline because you can hear it then that way you know someone's coming that way so that's very useful she can also kind of take up some utility on the enemy team because they have to sacrifice something to the lasers because like i say they can't actually damage the device itself so they need to fire something into the lasers to actually switch you off so she uses up utility not much of course because the actual long cooldown afterwards but definitely some then of course we've also got the denial as well stopping players from actually getting into objective rooms or into certain parts of the map unless they obviously want to sacrifice something to get there now there are some operators that counter her very very well one is yana because she has a hologram that can run into the lasers and take them out and initiate that cooldown and because of course yana can just keep making new holograms she can keep bringing those lasers down and also if you have two at a single wall she can actually run that hologram in between both of the lasers and take out two full laser grids thatcher is also a very good counter although maybe not quite as you would expect so his emp will disable the lasers for 15 seconds like he does with other stuff but they do come back online after that it's actually if you're just wanting to take the laser offline it's better to actually throw the EMP into the lasers and sacrifice it because then it'll be disabled for 30 seconds and then have to be reset by a defender. And then another surprise encounter is Hibana because Hibana's got a rework this season where she can fire off six, four, or two pellets. Because she can fire off two, that means she can sacrifice a lot of her shots, just firing them into lasers if she wants. And of course, Jaeger's active defense system and Wamai's magnet cannot catch them so she can actually take those lasers out without any issues. And of course, you've got the operators like Zofia and Ash as well that of course can shoot stuff at range. But basically, simple thing is, anyone with something they can throw can actually get around this laser system. Now, when it comes to our actual power as an operator, I don't think she's overpowered. She does have a good loadout. She's going to actually be quite deadly. But her gadget is, I think, relatively weak and quite easy to counter. And... With any kind of coordinated team up against just her doing her thing, they're going to be able to easily counter it and get in and have no real issues. The problem for attackers is when she starts to coordinate with the rest of her team. And this can be very simple. Like, these are the kind of scenarios I think are going to work really well for her. So, castle barricade on a window or a door and then lasers on top of that. That makes them double hard to get through. You're going to have to use something to make the castle explode or melee it to death. Then you're going to have to use something to get through the lasers. Then, of course, you have to get through any defenders that are there. And, of course, if you take too long, they're going to reset the lasers. Then there's other setups you can do. So, for instance, you can have some Wamai magnets hidden on the other side of the laser to catch anything they're trying to throw into that laser to deactivate it using up utility. Then you can, of course, have the lasers, then, say, a deployable shield and a frost mat. Or because of that double tick of damage I told you about, if you go through the laser slowly, you can have a laser gate and then a Malusi Banshee just sitting behind it to slow people down as they go through. Or even a Cap Can Trap. There is just so much that I cannot even comprehend all the different ways and combinations that you could put together to use this operator really well. But that's the thing. You need to use her with other people and you need to be very coordinated because otherwise this just doesn't work out too well. Now, if you do want to go with simpler tactics, you can. So, for instance, you can just put these lasers over rotation holes. So, if people do get into your objective, it does make it harder for them to move around and makes it easier for your defensive team to move around. So, that can be, of course, helpful. And just overall, it's quite a fun little gadget to play with and have a little bit of mess around with. It's also good that you can put these on hatches as well. So, for instance, if you've got a map with roof hatches, 
then you can actually do something with those hatches now rather than obviously right now you can't do anything with them now you can actually put some lasers up there so that's again something useful to be able to do and usually people will linger around those hatches for quite some time so it is possible that maybe they'll throw a drone in to begin with to take the lasers out but maybe they'll linger there too long and you can actually reactivate it before they come in and if they do want to jump through it they're taking 40 damage now let's talk about some of those surprises I was on about earlier. So begin with, Twitch drones doesn't do anything to this laser at all. You're not able to disable it, which I kind of thought would be the case because obviously Thatcher can do it, but Twitch cannot. Twitch's drone can also not reactivate the lasers, which would have been useful for a Mozzie drone, for instance, if it had been captured. It would have been cool to actually be able to reactivate them, so you cannot do that. Things like fused cluster charges, those actual grenades, if they go through the lasers, will yet again be destroyed and switch the lasers off. So literally anything that can make it to the laser can get through and destroy it. The lasers also have a gap on the doors that's the same height as like a castle barricade or a normal barricade, so drones can drive through safely. But a reinforced wall, the lasers do go down right to the bottom, so you're not able to sneak through underneath it on that occasion. Now the lasers also work with reinforced walls with mirror windows, which means you can put up a mirror window on a reinforced wall, then the lasers on the outside, and then if you stand close to the mirror window, the lasers will be off. So as soon as someone puts a hard breach on, you just back up and the lasers actually destroy the hard breach, which is really cool. Although the lasers did not work with soft walls with mirror windows for some reason. Now this could be a bug in the preview build I was playing, which is most probably the case. And there is a few downsides to having the lasers on the outside of the mirror window. First of all, you can't reset it, so you can't go out and shoot it if it's you know on the potentially the enemy's side. And Hibana's pellets, if they land on the mirror window itself, are then protected from the lasers because they're recessed and not on the actual surface the lasers cover. And then there's a few things I'm leaving to test on the actual test server build and not this preview build where I want to see how stuff interacts. Like I want to have magnets, then a laser wall, and use the magnets to pull gadgets through the lasers to see what happens. I'm assuming what will probably happen is the lasers get killed and the magnet gets killed. But it'd be cool if obviously we pull it into the lasers and fries but the magnet might live that would be really cool i don't think that's going to happen that way but like i say can't wait to test all this stuff anyway guys that's a first look at the new operator i'm going to leave you with her bio here if you want to go read that and i've also launched a video on the six news channel which goes over the balance and changes so the habana rework the major nerf to jaeger the echo nerf where his drones are no longer invisible and an absolute list of other stuff that's also coming in with this season anyway guys let me know what you think of this operator any ideas on what i should test for a myth butter video and i will catch you guys next time